Hey, this is John Vernon with Poets and Quants. I want to welcome you to our uh, webinar with PwC and strategy. Uh, we're going to talk all about consulting uh, and careers at PwC. And we have a terrific panel of people to do it with. Uh, let me introduce everyone. Uh, we have Kendall uh, Tomina. Uh, he's a manager uh, in management consulting. We have Brandon Rapp, a senior associate at Strategy Ann. We have Nisha Asher, uh, director of management consulting. And we have, who's going to stay quiet until <laughs> apparently, <laughs> Allison Palmer, who is the business recruiting manager for advisor at PwC. Welcome, everybody. So, Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thanks, John. It's a pleasure to see all of you and, uh, and a great uh, privilege to uh, get to chat about your careers and um, what you've encountered. So let's, let's start with, you know, uh, Nisha. Uh, what's, what's the one piece of advice you'd share with MBA students who are sort of going through the recruiting process for consulting? I mean, it's often a daunting process I know there are often case interviews that, that can be kind of scary. Uh, it's highly competitive. Um, what do you say? Yeah, I'll, I'll start. And Brandon, Kendall, as, as you have additional insights, please feel free to share. But I think a couple of things. One is, as on the other side, we've all been through the process. So we understand what you're going through and preparation is key. So make sure you're doing a couple of things. One is do your research, right? Just understand basic questions, talk to your classmates or other individuals um, that you may know with LinkedIn or otherwise that already work at that firm or may have already worked in the past. It'll give you a good feel for the culture, the type of interview style to expect, and then also what might be important to that firm. So for PwC specifically, it's a, you know, it's a company that really focuses on your specialty, what you bring to the table, a lot of your experience. And so really being able to talk about you as a person, what do you bring to the table? What have you experienced? I think is fundamental. And then two is, use your classmates to prepare for the case studies to understand what's going on within the industry, things like that. Um, but your classmates have gone through it, we've gone through it. So always ask questions, talk to the people you know, and you know, rely on your network because that's, that's what we've all done. But yeah, Brandon, I, I, Kendall, anything else to add? Yeah, I mean, I think my biggest piece of advice for MBA students going through the recruiting process is to approach it with a lot of discipline, treat it like your most important class. Um, that was, that was sort of how I thought about it was, you know, I, I came into my MBA for the career opportunities that would come after that. And so, um, you know, I spent a lot of time with my career office at my school. I had, you know, the spreadsheet, I asked my classmates and former students, uh, alumni, what, you know, what they recommended, how to keep it all organized. Um, and the other thing I would say is like, talk to the recruiters you know, ask them about timelines, ask them what they recommend, you know, you do to, to stay on top of everything. Um, they're a great resource. Brandon, you have advice? And, yeah, the only thing I would add is authenticity matters, right? Like be able to bring your full self into these conversations. I think oftentimes we feel as though, you know, we do all this preparation, we have to show up a certain way to get the job. And on our side, we're just looking for you to show up as yourself, right? And looking to see that you can hold a conversation um, to, to tell us about things that you're interested in. Um, that's just as important as we think about you being at the organization as well. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and I'm imagining join the consulting club, right? Because you're going to find your tribe there and they're gonna help you through the process, particularly the second years who've been through the internship recruiting process and all the info centers, sessions. Uh, so Brandon, what advice would you share with MBA students uh, in terms of networking now that we're still uh, locked in this pandemic world where face-to-face -face meetings are more challenging? That's such a good question. Um, I, I wanna start this off by saying that um, this is what I've seen work successfully, successfully from my end as I've been helping to recruit over the last two years. Um, 
The first one is to join the conversations that the organizations host virtually, right? And this is not just so that you can say that you attended an event during the interview process. It's really to, to get into the know of the company and to, to, to understand what are those things that the company is focused on, um, to ask more questions. Uh, those things are important just to get you comfortable with the company, right? Mm -hmm. Attend the events. The reason you want to attend the events, similar to this one, is so that you can then follow up, right? Like the next, to keep the momentum going on your networking virtually, you wanna follow up either via email or LinkedIn. Um, and I know many times when people reach out to me afterwards via LinkedIn, it gives me an opportunity to look at their information, to understand you know, what schools they've come from, to connect with them on a deeper level so that I can better tell their story to recruiters or whomever, right? That's important as well. The, the third thing that I think is important is to remember that um, once you connect on LinkedIn, um, that person may not respond, right? And that's okay, but feel free to, to do some cold, I'm gonna say calling, but it's like cold chatting, right? <laughs> like, where you go and find people who have similar backgrounds to you, Right? Maybe they went to the same school, maybe they're from the same location, but you can connect with those folks and say, hey, Brandon, you know, we went to the same undergrad, we went to the same graduate school, in this case, graduate school, and I'm interested in learning more about this particular thing. For me, renewable energies, right? And I would talk about that all day, but make those connections personal. That's at the end of the day, that's where you want to get to be able to keep the networking going. So yeah. those, are my, those are my three big pieces of advice. I love that. That's terrific advice. It really is. Now, Kendall, you, you uh, referred earlier to uh, going at this as if you were preparing for almost an exam in a class. I wonder if there was a class that you took or one you didn't take during your MBA years that you wish you took that would have better prepared you for a consulting career. Yeah, yeah, that's a terrific question. So for me personally, there was a class that my school offered called Management of Professional Services Firms. Um, and it was all about how, what the business model is, operating model, the business of a consulting firm, an accounting firm, uh, law, architecture, et cetera. They're all very, they have a similar operating model that's very different from other businesses. Um, and so that actually gave me a lot of insight into um, how, how a consulting firm operates, how it makes money, um, and that helps understand, you know, what kind of talent we're going to be looking for and, and what life is going to be like, um, and, and helps you with the things that you need to do to advance and to one day be, you know, managing those firms, um, and even, you know, maybe a principal or partner. Um, so that was really, really helpful. Another thing that I would say is, um, you know, there are different types of consulting firms out there. There are ones where you're, you're a generalist, um, you come in and you might do any given thing. Um, the, the part of the firm that I work in, in, in PwC, we really get to specialize a little bit more as we come in. So what I wish I had known early on is that, you know, if I wanted to focus on, um, operations or finance or whatever it might be, there's a place to do consulting and bring that expertise, um, at a firm like PwC. And for me, I knew that I wanted to do human capital consulting and that's, that is what I focus on, um, but I kind of like, I kind of focused in pretty heavily on that. I didn't know that I really could have the opportunity to, um, you know, change tracks and maybe go into operations or something else. So that's what I would say. So we got the human capital expert. We got the renewable energy expert. Misha, what are you an expert at? <laughs> I focus within our health, our healthcare industry. Uh -huh, so very all hot, healthcare, hot. all things. <laughs> Indeed. I hope that got you uh, in line early for a vaccine. <laughs> I, I wish, <laughs> but we've gotten to see some really great cases and really work with a lot of different pharmaceutical companies that are pushing out um, the vaccines and work with a, lo a lot of the regulations, the WHO. So, you know, really, really great programs um, that we've been able to work through. I know that a very big hot button issue right now is diversity and inclusion. Uh, it's very important to a lot of MBA students who are looking to align with you know, a company after they graduate. I wonder if you can talk a little bit about what PwC has done in this area and how the uh, network has helped you. 
Yeah, I can kick us off here. Um, sure. Diversity and inclusion is important to the work that I do. Um, and I know for sure that it is important to the company that I'm a part of, PwC Strategy Ant. And there's a number of, of initiatives that have taken place. I, I want to talk about two in particular that I think are important to me. The first is um, PwC's um, publishing of their transparency report, right? And for everyone that's out there, I think this is important because um, for the firm to be honest in this way about data around diversity and inclusion at the company made me feel as though I was being a part of a company that is willing to understand its challenges and try to, to leverage the resources, the people to be able to address those challenges around diversity and inclusion issues. It, it sort of signaled that this is not a problem or a challenge that only leadership should be solving, but we all should be together trying to address these challenges around diversity and inclusion at the firm. And that really stuck out to me uh, from um, a diversity and inclusion standpoint. The second really quickly, John, is um, in, uh, this is getting to sort of how we are working with communities has been uh, our skills for society hours where we're dedicating each employee um, has allotted 40 hours around diversity and inclusion, social justice, society, community challenges. And we sort of go out and work with nonprofits to address those challenges. I've been able to work with major social justice organizations. But what I want you to hear from this is that the company has given us the autonomy to be able to go out outside of the firm to understand challenges and problems outside the firm around things that we care about. And as somebody who wants to belong at the company and to be able to give value to the company outside of you know, just quantitative and qualitative analyses, um, that was important to me. So I, those are the two big pieces around DNI. Now we have six actions that the firm has taken. I can go into more details around that, but those two really stuck out to me. Yeah, and transparency is key to accountability. I mean, if you don't have the numbers, if you don't measure it, you can't manage it and you, and you can't focus on it. So, you know, that's a really big step to, to be upfront and honest about where you stand in any given uh, moment. Yeah, and if, if John, if I may um, just yeah. add on to that, there's some really great communities at the firm as well that focus on specific topic areas. So for example, I am part of two groups, one, which is our women in technology, um, which really focuses around um, individuals that really want to grow within the technology space that may not have, may feel like they're in the minority group, right? Or may not have the resources. And so PwC, outside of the traditional day-to-day -day project work, offers a lot of training courses, access to C-suite or executive leaders at a variety of different firms of individuals that have grown in their careers. And so you get to, and, and as well as a big network of individuals who are going through a lot of these, you know, growing challenges within their careers. And it offers just a different community outside of my projects on with individuals across different industries and give me access to people. But then two is, Another group that I'm in is our fertility group. So it's for individuals who are, you know, starting to grow, wanting to have a family, maybe going through, you know, other fertility issues, may just be planning to, you know, have a child or may have had a child and going through, what does that mean for me when I'm working at PwC? You know, how does this work with my travel schedule? How does this work with my client schedule? What happens when I go through maternity leave? Things like that. Yeah. Um, but again, there's a variety of so many different communities that are out there for individuals across a variety of different um, interest areas. And I'll just say that that community has really pushed me and let me stay within consulting when we know that consulting has been, you know, a, a hard career at first, right? That there's a training ground, sure. there's an element of learning the role, and then there's a lot that's asked of you, but there's also a lot that's given back. So um, just wanted to share some of those communities as well. That's yeah. Great. And I can share a little bit about my experience with our inclusion networks. I actually um, came into the firm through uh, the Reaching Out MBA program. Um, so that's for LGBTQ identifying students and, and people. Um, and so that was a, it was a really lovely process of meeting the firm through that, that recruitment conference and um, 
you know, very personalized experience. And so through, for me personally, I really, when I went into my MBA, I knew that I wanted a firm that was very affirming of LGBTQ folks. And um, so it was important to me to recruit through that network and to find somewhere that would, would value that part of my identity. Um, and I, I definitely felt like I found that here. So after I've been, you know, full-time, I was able to um, join our local affinity group. Um, and I'm also part of a, a national LGBTQ, actually it's an international LGBTQ women's uh, networking group, um, which we have like a monthly call every, you know, second Friday of the month and um, get to catch up and hear what different people are working on and what's happening and our recruitment efforts and um, the different times of the year we get to celebrate pride together or um, transgender day of visibility, things like that. So it's been um, really wonderful to help advance uh, our community together. Um, and, and, you know, personally I identify as queer woman. I'm married to a woman. Um, our, 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 our transgender um, colleagues, it's super, super important to me to be a good ally to them. Um, I did also join the Latino Inclusion Network. I joined the Black Inclusion Network um, to, to show support of those communities as well and um, have really enjoyed getting to, to be part of those, those things. So. Give, a, give us a sense of the culture at PWC. I mean, uh, just what you've told me uh, makes me think it's, a, it's an incredible culture that embraces all people, uh, gives people all opportunity and supports them. But, but if you had to describe the culture to someone who hasn't yet experienced it, what would you say? Ever? Yeah, that's a great question. That's a great question. I, I mean, I would say that... Um, I would say that two, I'm of two minds. One thing is it, it really flows from Tim Ryan, our CEO. He does set that from the top um, with, with getting personal with us, being on webinars, getting to you know, hear what he's thinking about and being very affirming of ourselves as humans you know, and what's going on in the world and um, bringing our best selves and living our values. We, we talk about our values a lot and that's important to me. Um, and then I would also say that there's, there are very different you know, sort of micro cultures we have. I, Allison can correct me. Uh, I want to say we have something like 40,000 U.S. employees. So, you know, if you talk with someone in the human capital uh, consulting group, it might be a little bit different than the cybersecurity group, you know, where there's going to be some groups that attract more extroverts or introverts, some groups that are really into, um, you know, having a lot of social time or, or not. Uh, so so there, there's also different pockets that, that keep things interesting. You always get to meet people um, who know things that you don't, I'm always learning and growing. So I would definitely open it up for others. I'm sure there's many perspectives on <laughs> what the PwC culture is. Yeah. So, so, so Brandon, okay. You're in a bar. Someone, you, you tell someone you work at PwC, they ask you, so what's it really like? What do you say? I, my immediate response is that, um, and what I always tell people is that we're a company that's, um, willing to, to try to figure it out, you know? And I think that's important to note because within each, within each organization, you're going to have challenges and you want to know that you have a team that's willing to work alongside you to figure it out. And I don't think I've run across um, people who weren't willing to have the open and honest conversation, right? And this is across either my professional development or social justice, racial equity, you know, type topics that to have those conversations. And as I think about going back to what Kendall said really quickly about this attitude coming from the top, yeah. like Tim Ryan, I can, I'll talk about this. <laughs> he's so, he's so on it and so personable and so authentic that I think it, that is why I am at this company, right? Because I know that our CEO has our back and that's important to me as well, right? And so as I think about the culture, we're, we're, we're sort of showing up, trying to figure it out as we're going along, not saying that we're perfect in anything, but that we're, we're figuring it out. Great, yeah. you, give me a few adjectives on the culture. It's blank, blank, blank. Teamwork, teaming, inquisitive, and transparent. I like that, that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Okay. And I think this goes yeah. back to Brandon's earlier point around culture and making sure you're being your authentic self when you come to these interviews, because when you go through these interviews, irrespective of the firm, 
there's no right or wrong culture, but you need to understand what's right for you and where you feel like you fit in. As soon as I was going through my own recruiting process and the individuals I met during that process is the entire reason that I'm at PwC. That's where I felt most welcome, where I felt like my personality could shine and I related the most to individuals. I could actually go to their houses on the weekend. We could go to happy hours. I could go, you know, out with them and it would feel like a very friendly, very natural relationship. And so as you're going through this recruiting process, I just urge that, you know, you put yourself out there, feel out the culture for yourself. And that's really should go into a determining factor as you think about, you know, internships, full-time careers, things like that. And actually, uh, that's a great segue into uh, next steps, which is your new sort of preview into the world of consulting for uh, first year MBAs. Uh, Allison, tell us about the program. Uh, I know it's a two week experience during the summer and this is before an MBA even hits campus, right? Yeah, so that's correct. Um, there are a couple ways to connect with us going forward and we're really excited to stay in touch with all of you. And um, one inaugural program this year that I wanted to put a plug in for, as John referenced, is our new consulting preview program, which is for incoming first year MBAs who identify as underrepresented minority, veteran, uh, and or an individual with a disability. Um, it's a two week paid program and it'll take place this summer. Um, the goal at the end of the program is to give any attendees an offer for our internship in the summer of 2022. So it's a really good way to get to know us as a firm, understand a little bit more about consulting in general, and also um, hopefully secure an early internship offer and have that squared away um, for next summer. So um, we'd love for you to learn more about that. I will, if it's okay, John, I'll ping um, the links to our MBA landing page and our consulting preview landing page in the chat. Um, and I encourage folks to check those out and you can learn more details and see application deadlines and all that good stuff. Yeah, that's fantastic. Absolutely. Now, what do you intend to do with these uh, incoming MBAs for those two weeks? What kind of experiences will they have? Yeah, it'll be um, really exciting. It'll be a, kind of a mini consulting internship type of experience. And so you'll um, get a lot of different opportunities to network with our consultants and um, learn more about our consulting engagements and, and the skills that it takes to be a good consultant. And more to come. Um, it's taking place in July, so it's in the works right now. But um, keep checking our landing page to get additional details and the deadlines in early May. Um, and I'll also add that we'll be participating in the rest of the festival events in early May. So we look forward to seeing folks there. And also um, always feel free to stay in touch with our dedicated um, MBA recruiters at um, your given school or just um, keep an eye out for our job postings and things like that as well. And we have a few questions coming in and I have a, a couple of questions as well uh, to ask. Uh, here's a question from Kyle who says, do you have any advice for someone who considers himself an introvert in navigating this network building recruitment process? Anybody want to take that on? Are there any introverts in the crowd? No. <laughs> Me. Okay. Nisha, yeah. why don't you go for it? <laughs> sure. So I'll just say two things. One is PwC actually has a tremendous amount of introverts. Um, individuals who have to be an introvert, you know, they are an introvert and then have to be an extrovert for client facing. But I'll, I'll just leave with this. When you're going through the recruiting process, know where your emotional line is, right? So reach out, make sure you're engaging through emails, through other connectivity. And then when you're talking to someone, just keep it focused to a specific time, keep it focused to specific questions. Um, and quality matters, not quantity. So don't think you need to talk to a thousand people, talk to 10 people where you feel most closely connected, but that quality matters, I think is very, very important. Yeah. 
And it's easier one-on-one, -on -one, uh, I would think, yeah. even for an introvert. And I have Absolutely. to, say, I started as an introvert as well. So I, I totally get it. Um, coming out of that shell is an important part of the MBA experience as well. And, and I think that the two years you spend at an MBA program will help you do that. Now, now what differentiated PWC for you, Kendall? Yeah, I mean, for me, there were quite a few things. Um, I, I kind of mentioned the, the LGBT affirming aspect of, you know, of PWC. Another would be um, as an MBA student, a lot of the companies that were recruiting on my campus, like had very specific types of consulting they wanted me to do. PwC was was open for me to to explore human capital. Um, I I don't yeah I mean really truly at the end of the day, there's something that comes down to gut instinct and comes down to um, that connection and that feeling of you know belonging and it being the right place for you at the right time. Um, personally, I there's not another you know there's not another major consulting firm I'd rather be at. I you know, there, it's a, there was a question around, you know, the, the, the outlook right now. I think there's a, a lot um, of hiring going on and I'm not looking to, you know, to move. Um, we've, we've come out of the pandemic really, really strong. And um, yeah, any, anywhere in consulting you go, you're going to work hard. And um, here was just the place that I felt like best fit with what I was looking for. And, and um what I was looking to do and the people that I wanted to spend time around. Brendan, what ultimately made the difference for you? Um, connections with uh, partners at the firm. And so mm -hmm. the partners engage heavily in our recruiting process. I think that was important to see that they wanted to have that level of, of conversation and relationship, even at the very beginning. And that hasn't stopped since I've joined the firm. Um, and, as I'm looking for mentorship, professional development, um, that was important to me uh, coming into the, the firm. Right, that's great. Nisha, you wanna take a shot at that? Sure, I think for me it was A, the people, hands down, and B was the entrepreneurial spirit that, that was asked. So with a lot of other consulting firms, I had felt um, either a hierarchical or a different level of a con you know autonomy or accountability that I personally could take on. I felt with PwC, you really have the ability to make your own career and really be able to take accountability for your programs and learn that way. And that was what, what really pushed me towards PwC. Yeah, that's great. And someone is asking, do you have a social impact or a sustainability mm -hmm. practice? Uh, I, I imagine you do. Uh, is that right? Those feel like two different types of things. Yeah, um, they really on do. The, the social impact side, there are opportunities to do social impact work, not only through our nonprofit, like um, Skills for Society, 40 hours giving back work, but we do get projects that come across the desk around social impact, right? And um, we've participated in a number of different projects and different client experiences around social impact. On the sustainability side, that that can kind of break down into many different areas you know but mm -hmm. but from an energy point of view um sustainability is top of mind um and so we get those projects all the time so yes and and i imagine there are global opportunities uh in that area as well right yeah well listen uh, now you know out there uh that there's going to be this cool new program consulting preview uh, Allison has given you the link in the chat box so you can go there and apply. Uh, deadline is May. You have a two week experience at PWC, you really get to feel uh, what it's like, meet some important people, start the networking, not only within the firm, frankly, but also with your, your other uh, MBA admits from different schools, which is a really cool thing, the opportunity to network with them even before you begin your program. Now, Brandon, Nisha, Kendall, is there one thing you wish you knew before you started your MBA program that maybe you can give to our audience uh, to help them get a great head start? Nisha? There is so much power in your classmates. Rely on them, form relationships, and really, really spend the time 
to have fun during your MBA program, because after that, you are just going to be working for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> hey, work is fun. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> okay. uh, Brandon? Yeah, I would just, I just would reiterate the fact that like you have a voice um, and don't forget that, right? Coming into a firm, a big firm like this, um, it may seem a little overwhelming, um, but remember that you can create your time here, your space here, um, and um, that what you're trying to, as much as PwC Strategy Ann is trying to get you to go on client projects and do those type of things, like you too are trying to develop as a person. And so keep that in mind as you're going through the recruiting process, as you start your new job, that you want to have an intentional plan about where you want to be, who you want to be. Um, that's important as well. Yep. Personal growth, super important. And one good thing about service firms is they do invest in people. Um, Kendall, your advice? Yes. No, I, Nisha and Brandon, I completely agree. I think a piece of advice someone gave me when I started my MBA that was really, really helpful is there's a million opportunities, a million ways you can spend your time and to just be really intentional about um, not taking yourselves too seriously, but be really intentional about what those things are for you. Um, which clubs, which classes, which, you know, forming relationships and spending time with your colleagues, getting to know upperclassmen, getting to know the faculty, um, what it is you want to be doing and, and how much sleep you need, you know, at the end of the day and, and how much you need to see your family. Um, all of those things can be really important for folks too. Um, so not feeling like at any given moment, you know, if I'm with my family, oh, I should be studying. If I'm having fun, with my, if I'm studying, I should be having fun with my classmates. Whatever you're doing in that moment um, is, is probably something valuable. And if it's not, go and do the other thing, but, <laughs> um, but not to feel guilty because there is, there's more than you could possibly take advantage of. So you don't have to feel like you have to do every single thing. So true. Allison, final words. Um, I want to take a screenshot of your book collection, John, because <laughs> I need some recommendations. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've written, so, um, you know. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, anyway. Um, well, I would just leave the group with definitely stay in touch with us. We're really excited to get to know you, and you're about to embark on a really exciting two-year adventure, and we're looking forward to continuing to network, and thanks for your time today. Yep, well said. Uh, thank you, everyone out there. And um, remember, at our pre-MBA networking festival, you'll have a chance to uh, attend the PwC session, uh, ask, meet more people, ask plenty of questions, um, and get a lot more insights about what life is like inside uh, this firm. So, hey, what a pleasure it has been to meet all of you and to spend this time with you. I wish we could have done it live over a drink or two uh in a relaxed setting instead of in on zoom but hey this is the next best thing you can do today huh <laughs> so brandon kendall uh, nisha good luck uh with the rest of your career and uh allison thank you so much for uh, making this big announcement about uh consulting preview and for all of you out there go to the link that allison put up uh we'll we're going to write something up on this so that um, more people who weren't able to attend live. And incidentally, this will be on demand so you can see it. And if you joined us late, you can see it from the start. Uh, you'll be able to do that as well. Um, but check it out. Meantime, thank you. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, John. <laughs>